the racist video, the young white student decided to make a racist video against another black student, okay? Well, the school board, they have been inactive. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to make a decision. They were afraid to show some leadership. Well, guess what happened? Students and supporters shut down their Lily White school board meeting. Here's some of it. I believe that is all of our speakers this evening. Thank no, you. No, you got another speaker. I, I you have not. another speaker. I do not, and I can. This answer. room has another speaker. You can knock that hammer all you want. Follow protocol. No, but he has the right to speak. I have the right. You are here to listen to the community, so he has the right to speak. I was going to enter this room with a bullhorn. And I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to listen to anything you had to say. I understand, and we have policies and procedures. And I may not have been invited to speak. I'm going to ask you to be clear. From and I'll gladly take more than three minutes. All right. I'm going to call. A I may not speak as eloquently as the previous speakers, but you will hear me. For a recess. For a second. But to uh, touch you, I need to give him a chance to Just speak. as I heard hundreds of stories. He just needs to listen to what he wants to say, we have the right. Just as I heard hundreds of stories. I heard hundreds of stories from these children, Amy. And I'm not here to talk about equity or equality and diversity. I'm here to demand that the school takes accountability. Demand that the school takes accountability. In the light of an international scandal, y'all didn't make a decision. In the light of an international scandal. Y'all didn't make a goddamn decision. Man. That being said, it shouldn't take the world to watch for you to have to make a decision. But not only that, Michael, Michelle, even when the world was watching, you still didn't make a decision. After this happened, you can step out. I'm going to keep speaking to these people here that you guys are supposed to represent. Now remember the genesis of all of this is a white student who made a viral video telling a black student next time kill yourself the right way. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically the gist of it. The student, the black student, her name is Naya Saigon, okay? That's one of the videos from that school board. The school board meeting was initially interrupted by local activist Lavish Mack, who spoke out in support of the family. Here's more. In the light of an international travesty, where you guys are supposed to proudly represent, and thank y'all too for staying, you guys failed to make any action. We should have the integrity to do the right things when no one's looking. See the district just walk away. Period. That's when no one's looking. That's what y'all teach y'all kids. Well, why doesn't it apply to these kids? And then when Sean King and myself blow this out to immeasurable proportions, y'all still have failed to make any sort of decision. Still. After this happened. They're, the family's address was leaked. Address. The Sijin family's address was leaked, and then the school still failed to hold the girl, Ava H., who leaked the address accountable. She just leaked their address in the midst of an international scandal. Tell me a news agency that this didn't pop up on, and then we can say that it's not international, right? The media that you have in here now is not representative of a typical school board meeting. Yet your actions are still representative of a racist ass institution that teaches these little punk ass kids how to not value other lives. You guys might not like black people either. But what we can do is just take race out of it and just look at humanity and try to come from a place of love. A place of love doesn't allow when Elizabeth Sijin is called down to the office to talk to a police officer. When a young white girl gave up their address, but you have a young black woman talking to a police officer. Now, I want to remind you, he is there at the request of the family, okay? He has been their advocate, their spokesperson, their fighter, their champion. Elizabeth Segan, who is a senior and the older sister of Naya, spoke about the meeting as well. Here's what she said. All on camera looking real, you real bad, real bad. Slavery is, this is modern day slavery. Walking out on kids, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. And you might just get to walk out Why every day we have to struggle. And you can just walk out of the room and now look at what we go through. You all are white and you all raise racist children.
raw emotion. They're hurting. The children, the students, the leadership is inactive. Um, the board members walked out when the Twin Cities activist, uh, Lavish Mack, who was not on the list of speakers, interrupted the meeting. He and other activists held up a stack of 100 student experiences they are collecting from current and former Prior Lake students. Four members of the board walked out after he spoke, except for the sole board member of color. Two board members were not at the meeting. Let me give you some demographics on this area. Prior Lake is 87.7% white, with residents of color making up 12.3% of the community. That's according to Compass data. Ben, what do you see here? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we're seeing a reality that is really in school boards across America. And like, all, like, like, I mean, there's this whole school to prison pipeline that literally just criminalizes the existence of black students. Well, meantime, if students are experiencing racism in the school, nine times out of 10, the administration is just gonna turn around and say, "Oh, it's just a joke, it's well-meaning, it's this, that, and the other thing, and shrug it off. And it's also hard to not put this in the context of all of these right wingers that have been literally like storming into school boards, screaming at the top of their lungs about critical race theory, which isn't even a real issue. Um, and I saw a lot of school boards listening. I saw a lot of school boards having a, going out of their way to be very patient and polite That's with right. those people. Okay, but what do they do here? They just walk away at the first sign of you know tension or conflict or them being challenged on the institutional racism that they're perpetuating. It just speaks for itself, I think. The irony is damning here that school boards will take seriously the notion of critical race theory being taught in K through 12 education, which it never has been, but they will give room to that idea, to that narrative, to that protest, which is an advanced study of institutionalized racism in America. They will say, "Oh yeah, sure, yeah, we'll we'll you know we'll give some room for that here," and then totally ignore actual racism in their institution. Unbelievable.